infra-lightweight concrete is load-bearing thermal insulation. You can build with one material that takes care of everything. There's other materials like that. There's timber, and timber is a wonderful material, material to build with. But there's issues of durability, of fire protection, of acoustic uh, transmission, and all that uh, can be easily solved with concrete, which is very dur durable, which does not burn, and which can uh, maintain sound very nicely. And this is why I think this very lightweight, very, very lightweight concrete, this is why we call it infra-lightweight concrete, is a, is a serious alternative that we now have after many years of investigation. We started to think about building with such a material more than 10 years ago. It started with touching buildings that were built at that time, and they sounded hollow. It's a talk, talk, talk facade. It's this um, composite thermal insulations, these composite systems that are used um, quite frequently, where you have several layers of uh, insulation, and that uh, works wonderfully, but it sounds hollow. It doesn't sound durable. And we were very much inspired by the Swiss way of building. There was quite a number of 90s, fair-faced, lightweight concrete buildings that impressed us because there was no additional insulation. And this was the starting point. We used these lightweight concretes that we learned about and we improved them further. We made them infra-light, like infra is Latin, it means underneath, below. So it's below normal weight, concrete's weight. And uh, this is how it started 10 years ago. And uh, the secret is uh, actually no secret. All you do is you substitute heavyweight aggregates like gravel by lightweight aggregates. That could be pumice, natural lightweight materials, but it could also be inflated clay. It could be foamed glass that you use instead of the gravel. And then you get very lightweight concrete that weigh below 800 kilos. This is where normal lightweight concrete starts. This concrete is so light it floats in water that makes, causes trouble when you do uh, test cubes because they float away. Um, but these lightweight concretes, they have, they're very porous. You can also um, add some foam agents to get more air bubbles and all that uh, creates insulation in a way. So we have very lightweight, infra-lightweight concrete that becomes load-bearing insulation and that we have used 10 years ago for an experimental building and now after 12 years of testing and investigating we think we're ready to go. I think there's an enormous range of applications, possible applications. The house we built 10 years ago proved that infra-lightweight Concrete is durable and stable. There's no cracks, there's no wear. It looks the same. There is no deterioration whatsoever. That means you can use them for all kinds of buildings. We have improved the strength of the concrete by now so that you can build 10-story houses without trouble. But you could also use it for supermarkets because when you go to the supermarket, you don't leave your coat at the wardrobe. You go like that. And that means there's not so much insulation, thermal insulation required at such places. So that would be a wonderful application also. And this, this is just to give you an example. There's a huge range. And uh, actually, we are working on a couple of projects like that right now. So just a few weeks ago, we had the topping out ceremony of a small building here in Berlin, the so-called Concrete Oasis, a very strange name. It's um, done by a public client, and that is very important, so that a public client shows interest. And it was um, finished with a very nice surface and infralightweight concrete of only 700 kilos per cubic meter. So that shows that it's uh, possible. We got a, a permit to build it because it's still not in the codes, this material. And um, this um, is a starting point. We are also working on a 10-story building with Barco Leibinger architects that is made of prefabricated elements. You should know that you know, if you have small amounts of concrete in your building, then it's perhaps better to work with in C2 type concrete. You know. You should know when your building is small, it's better to work with in situ concrete. No joints, monolithic building, and uh, you can just pour it in the formwork. 
Now, if buildings get bigger and you want to build fast, then you should start thinking about prefabricated elements. In the case of the 10-story building close to Alexanderplatz that we're working on with Barco Leibinger, uh, we are trying to apply the idea of precast elements. So you concrete the slabs of the individual floors and then you just put the wall elements on top, windows in between, and that should be a very fast way of building because it's only concrete elements, no additional insulation, very easy details. You just um, bolt the window frames to the precast elements. So this is uh, another project that we are working on right now. Since infralightweight concrete is not a mix, well, it's a mix because there's reinforcement in it, but it's not a mix of different organic insulation materials with uh, mineral materials like concrete. Since it's only one material, it should be very easy to recycle it at end of life. Infralightweight concrete, I would say, costs about four to 500 euros per cubic meter. So this is much more expensive than normal concrete. But you should bear in mind that first of all, it's for the exterior walls of the structure. The structure is only a small percentage today of, entire, of the entire construction cost. And the exterior walls are also only a, a fraction of the overall structure. But on top of that, you save all the insulation, you save all the complicated details that you might have with composite, composite thermal insulation systems. And therefore, if you look at the entire life cycle, um, we, we should break even. But it depends very much on the lobby you belong to, you know. Then you can work on the parameters and defend any systems. But personally, I think that um, we can break even with conventional wall systems and then if you compare it to double layer wall systems with interior insulation or uh, stone facades, stone, stone cladding, then definitely infralightweight uh, concrete will be more economic. Infralightweight concrete is for thermal insulation. That does not only mean that you have to keep the winter away. In hot countries like in India where you have air conditioning, you can also keep the cold air inside. So as a thermal insulation material, you can use it all over the world, provided that you have, uh, that you have uh, lightweight aggregates that are available. In other countries, in other situations, think of earthquake. Uh, since it's lightweight, there's less mass that gets moved in an earthquake, and therefore it could be a wonderful material also for earthquake uh, regions. But here in Germany, it's mainly as a thermal insulation material for cold winters, so to say, to keep the heat inside of the building. I don't think uh, infralightweight concrete will cause a revolution like post-tensioning of concrete or concrete in itself caused 100 years ago, but it's a, it's a serious alternative to other systems. It can be used for prefabrication. There's a tremendous housing problem around here and with prefabrication and with the time savings, because you don't have to put on all these layers of insulation, I think it's a good alternative. You know, at the Technische Universität, at the TU Berlin, we teach conceptual and structural design of structures, as since we are structural engineers. And it's very important to always bear in mind the properties of your material. Normal concrete works in compression, steel is good for tension, and what is good for infralightweight concrete? How do you design with infralightweight concrete? That's one of the most interesting questions. That opens an entire range of new possibilities. Because imagine the balcony that we now these days have to separate from the wall with insulation. If the balcony itself is insulating, you know, it can grow out of the wall again like the Gaudi buildings. There's all kinds of different approaches, so it will open up a new type of building, I'm convinced. Mm -hmm.